So this is a most unusual piece of art, as well as being a powerful and beautiful piece of sculpture. It stands here as a memorial and a lasting heartfelt tribute to the 2,100 British volunteers who served in Spain between 1936 and 1939, 534 of whom were killed and 65 of whom were Glaswegians. With this memorial, we pay homage to the sons and daughters of Glasgow who stood in defiance of fascism and in defence of democracy and freedom. I am proud and humbled to have the opportunity to welcome one of those exceptional volunteers back to Glasgow today for this rededication. Comrades, Mr. Thomas Waters. Yeah, veteran of the Scottish Ambulance Unit which worked at the front line in the battlefields of Spain to aid wounded fighters and volunteers from across the world. He was a Glasgow bus driver motivated to volunteer by humanitarian concern or as he himself has said if I can drive a bus then I can drive an ambulance I can help. In two years on the battlefield, Thomas witnessed horrors, including a terrifying moment when he had to scramble for cover in a village as German aircraft bombs dropped. His vehicle was destroyed. Last year, 70 years after the conflict, Thomas was awarded dual citizenship by the Spanish government in recognition of his service. We are honoured to be in his company today. And as we rededicate this statue of La Passionaria, we also rededicate this city of ours to the causes of international, uh, internationalism and the ongoing fight against neo-fascism. Finally, in tribute and out of respect to those volunteers who are no longer with us, let us observe a moment's silence. Thank you, brothers and sisters. And as a token of the city's regard for Mr. Waters, I would like to ask my comrade and friend, Councillor John Mackenzie, to present a cup of friendship, a quake engraved with the coat of arms of the city of Glasgow. Good morning, comrades and colleagues. Can I say once again what an honour and a privilege to share this event with Thomas. I'm looking around and there's quite a few faces that I know. Can I welcome Willie Maley and his family. Willie Maley's father fought in the Civil War. Back on the ground. Through this period when we're trying to re 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 establish the Patterson area, I've managed to make some friends, good friends, Margaret McGowan is here, Margaret Sir from, from Edinburgh, so welcome Margaret. <laughs> you can also say I'll finish off very, very briefly with this. Welcome to my great friend and colleague, 
Lowe Mellon, he was a former MEP for Glasgow. Also to my comrades and colleagues to the UCW, Tom McGill and Tom O'Brien. Welcome everyone, Jim, Jim Thrill, God bless him. Very, very briefly, colleagues, and if you could maybe forget about my very, very poor Spanish accent. 7th of November 1936, the fascists are coming to Madrid. We have little food or ammunition. They are powerful and they are many. They fight for pay. We only have this poor soil, but in my the dear ones, innocent ones, who gave us life and love. Brothers and sisters, it is better to die on your feet than to live forever on your knees. The fascists are coming. They will come, but they shall not pass. No passaram. No passaram. No passaram. Thank you, colleagues. reminds us that it's never right to appease fascism, it is always right to oppose and confront fascism. Colleagues, uh, this, uh, as I said, this is one of many memorials that stands in Glasgow and I'm absolutely delighted to see it restored and I'm delighted at the uh, role that the trade union movement in Scotland played in contributing towards the restoration. Of course, a number of those who fought in the International Brigade were and served in the Spanish Civil War were, were trade unionists uh, and some of those uh, lost, their, lost their lives and I'm pleased that a number of trade union organisations contributed towards the restoration uh, of, this, uh, of, this, uh, of this memorial. But I have to say this, I think this memorial is the same as any other memorial that celebrates the sacrifice of working class men and women in the fight against fascism and its, and its maintenance in the future should be very much treated in that way. This is a civic responsibility, not an individual responsibility, uh, and we should all ensure and campaign in the future that we never get into a situation again where, uh, where we have to scrabble around raising resources uh, to maintain uh, this uh, wonderful uh, memorial. My final word is this. What the International Brigades did was a fundamentally important part of working class history. And we need to ensure that we celebrate and preserve that history because if we don't do that, nobody else will. Uh, my son is uh, currently studying for an advanced higher in history and I was delighted that the subject for uh, his course is the Spanish Civil War. And I think it's important that we ensure that our young people are inspired to learn more about our working class history. And to also understand that fascism, fascism is not just historical. Fascism exists in our communities today and we need to inspire our young people to be involved in the fight against fascism and to recognise how important that is today. Finally, I'd like to uh, thank you all for coming, of course, but also a particular thanks to Councillor Mackenzie. If it wasn't for Councillor Mackenzie's taking up the cause of the restoration, I'm sure that it wouldn't have happened. And also a word of thanks to the Glasgow Herald who gave it some publicity. Uh, so thank you, Councillor Mackenzie, for that, and thank you all for coming along.
Thank you very much indeed, Graham, and, and uh, thank you all, uh, also uh, to your trade union colleagues for your ongoing commitment to issues of internationalism. Um, good news, comrades. Thomas Waters has said that he's prepared to and able to say a few words to today. Mr. Waters. Thank you very much. And I'm so pleased there are so many people come here in the day like this. I feel very privileged and very pleased to be here today on this rededication to a most wonderful woman who had great powers of raising the morale of the people around and she was given the name by the spiders of the Passionaria. And we're also here to pay homage to the International Brigade. The International Brigade, it wasn't a body of fighting men that went out there. These were all individual <coughs> civilians. And they were appalled at the spread of fascism. And they felt they themselves think they had to do something about it. And they made their way in various ways to get to Spain and volunteer to do something. And then the colossal task was all these people, men and women, from various countries, all the various languages, to get them organized into a body. And they did eventually, and they became very effective. I was with Scottish Ambulance Unit and left Glasgow here, and we came in contact with them occasionally, but the time when we did, in a big way, was the Battle of the Harama. And this was very, very vital. The nationalists, they wanted to come across from Mutafi, across the Harami, Harami Valley, and come round over by Arganda, and try and complete the circle around the, the central front, around Madrid. And therefore, the both sides were very desperate, and the fighting was desperate. And we, there were many, many international brigade casualties. But they held, and they never did, the nationalists never did get round about them, and they, they were very effective at a price. And this was one of the things that the Passion area recognized and appreciated the tremendous effort and achievements of the International Brigade and the cost in lives and everything. And we're also here to of the rededication of this wonderful monument to the Passion area and also to remember the International Brigade and what they did to try and say something that they felt so strongly about. Thank you very much. Sir.